Can you get into why blood sugar, uh, high blood sugar, particularly is a problem for our endothelial, endothelial, <laughs> endothelium. Um, yeah, <laughs> endothelium. endothelium. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, as I said, the endothelium is, is um, it, it has this lining called the glycocalyx, which is uh, it's like strands of sugar and protein all stitched together. You know, again, the, the, this is a we'll call it we'll call it uh, one millimeter thick. It isn't one millimeter thick. It's about 0 0.0 or whatever it is, one millimeter thick. Um, and and you want it to be thick because it, it acts as a protective layer. It stops blood clotting. Blah blah blah. So. When you look at, uh, and it's possible to look at the glycocalyx layer under a microscope. Now there's a glyco check monitor thing where you can stick it under the tongue and you can, you can see the thickness of the glycocalyx. And you can do certain things to it. You can make people's blood sugar go up and if their blood sugar goes up, you can see the glycocalyx shrinking. And people who have high blood sugar levels have got damaged, clumpy, not very healthy glycocalyx. This is Again, just you can go and look up, I think it's called glycocheck or something, but you can, you want to go and look at it, look on a good glycocalyx. Anyway, so obviously this makes the entire, uh, the underlying endothelium is now exposed to the blood. Things come along and stick to the endothelium, things damage the endothelium, the endothelium gets stripped off, blood clots form. It's just the same process really going on. Double trouble with uh, with, with uh, diabetes is because not just your big blood vessels that have got glycocalyx uh, lining them, your small blood vessels, your capillaries, your arterioles, these are tiny, tiny size, are big enough to allow one red blood cell to squeeze through sort of size. Um, they have glycocalyx on them. And, um, and obviously they don't have room for an atherosclerotic plaque to develop inside them. Um, that would be like a, a, a small snake swallowing an elephant. We're talking whether that's the correct size or not, a blue whale maybe. So, so you can't get atherosclerotic plaques in, in tiny blood vessels. You, but what you can do is you can destroy it. So if the glycocalyx is damaged and then the capillary is exposed to things going through it and then it's damaged and ripped off, what happens is the capillary just breaks down or bursts and is no longer there. And you can see when you the damage that you get in diabetes it's not just big blood vessel damage, it's small blood vessel disease, SM, SM small blood vessel damage. Anyway, um, and, uh, and the key areas of your body where you need these small blood vessels really is the back of the eyes. Tiny little blood vessels there are, 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 are nourishing your macula, uh, your, your macula and your, your retina. And you can see, if you look at the back of the eyes with diabetes, you can see little hemorrhages and bursts and white bits where things and exudates have come out. This is because the small blood vessels are being destroyed by the diabetes, which is the high sugar levels, damaging the glycocalyx and allowing the damage to occur. So diabetic blindness is a real problem. Same thing happens in your kidneys, because in your kidneys at the very smallest level in your nephrons, you have a really small blood vessels going into these nephrons and uh, it's thing called Bowman's capsule, blah, blah, blah. Now, if these small um, capillaries doing all the work of all the waste products going out, and it's really complicated, but if these start to break down, then the nephron dies and it stops working. So you get kidney failure as the nephron starts to die due to, again, small blood vessel damage. And then you get um, in, uh, the very small blood vessels that are supplying around the nerves at the end of your fingers and things like this. These start to block off and break off, so you start to kill your neurons at the end of your fingers, so you get peripheral neuropathy, you lose sensation. And of course, the problem with losing sensation is you bash them and then you get ulcers. And of course, then the skin itself, these are where the smallest blood vessels are going. So the, the blood vessel supplying your, your legs and your periphery are, are starting to die off as well. And so if you damage the skin, it doesn't repair and you get ulcers. And in fact, this ulcer and gangrene problem and, and you lose toes and you lose limbs. The commonest reason for for, uh, for for amputation below knee and, and the other form of amputation nowadays used to be smoking is now diabetes because you lose the circulation to the skin, to the nerves, to the eye, to the kidneys, blah, blah, blah. And this is what's going on. Um, and, it, and it's just the same process. So, you know, people say, oh, we, oh, small vessel disease and atherosclerosis are different things. No, they're not. They're just different manifestations of exactly the same process. The problem is, of course, if you start to break down capillaries small blood vessels, then the, the total, what they call the peripheral resistance, because obviously the blood's got to go out, the big blood vessels, the arteries, 
go through the capillaries back into the veins and back up. Well, if you start to lose capillaries, it, what they call peripheral resistance starts to increase. So as the peripheral resistance increases, the blood pressure has to go up to force the blood through less capillaries that are there. And, and you see this happening as well in a later stage. And then the kidneys start to fail and then you get chronic kidney disease and blah, blah, blah. And the whole thing starts to multiply in effect around itself. So, so uh, it is di diabetes from a perspective of a population-wide problem or high blood sugar levels, as you say, just because no one said you've got diabetes doesn't mean you're not got high blood sugar levels. It's just it's not high enough that anyone said it's diabetes yet. And, and sometimes it's hiding when you look for it. Um, so, you know, it's ridiculous to say we have diabetes and we've got pre-diabetes and we've got medical, all these stupid terms that we've got. What you've got is, is, is there's resistance to the impact of insulin. Your blood sugar level goes up, your insulin level goes up, and insulin itself is damaging to, to, to blood vessel walls and endothelial cells when the concentration is too high. Fantastic stuff, insulin, but boy, you don't want it up here. Which is, which is obviously one of the things that happens with currently the treatments are to force the sugar level down by driving the insulin level up. It's like, mm, okay, fine. You know, that's like lifting up the edge of the carpet and sweeping everything underneath, stumping up and down it and going, well, we've sorted that out. 